number seven, which says x squared divided by 25, and what plus? Y plus y squared over 16 equals 1. All right, so on this problem, all they're simply asking us to do is find the center, the vertices, the foci. Uh, we're not going to worry about eccentricity. You can just live there. We're not going to worry about eccentricity right now, and then we'll sketch the graph. All right, so the first thing we look at is remember our form. We had two formulas, right? X minus h squared divided by um, a squared plus y minus k squared divided by b squared, blah, 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 blah. So what we want to do is remember when we were looking at a picture of our um, ellipse, we knew that a was, or 2a was the length of our major axis, right? Yes? And then b was the, 2b was, I'm sorry, was the length of your minor axis. So on our denominator, we either have a squared or b squared. Which one's larger, a or b, on the, when you look at the picture? A. a is, right? So what I want to do is I want to determine out of my two denominators, which one of these is larger than the other. You can look and you say, well, obviously, yes, 25 is larger than 16, right? <coughs> so what we can have is now I can say that 25 is equal to a squared and um, 16 is equal to b squared. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So now that I know that this is my a squared is under my x, I'm going to write out that formula. So remember the formula goes x minus h squared divided by a squared plus y minus k squared divided by b squared equals 1. <coughs> All right. So we look at this and we say, all right, since I know my a squared is under my x coordinate, this was the formula for a ellipse when we have the major axis is horizontal. So I don't know what my graph looks like, but I know it's going to look something like this. Right? It's going to have a horizontal major axis. Okay? So now we know we have our a and our b. You know, well, first of all, um, so in this case, to solve for a, it's pretty simple. We just take the square root of both sides. a equals plus or minus 5. Here to find b, we have b equals plus or minus 4. Correct? OK. So um, let me actually draw this out again. A little bit nicer. OK. So here's what we're dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. We know we have a center. We know we have two vertices. And we know we have two foci. Right? Vertices, center, foci, foci. Now, in our problem, do we know what the center is? Center is HK, right? Center. Isn't it zero, zero? Yeah, zero, zero. Center is H comma K. Well, in this problem, we don't, we're not subtracting anything, right? So in this problem, our center is going to be zero comma zero. Now the next thing it says is find the distance of, let's do actually our, um, let's do our vertices first. So remember, to find our vertices from the center to one vertice is equal to a distance of A. Right? So that means I'm going to have to travel A to the left, and I'm going to have to travel to A in the right direction. Right? So now I'm going to be adding and subtracting A, which when we said <coughs> our vertice, our vertice takes on the form when it's horizontally H plus or minus A comma K. All right, now, do we have an H and a K? No, there's a well, we do, it's zero, zero. But we can say our vertice is now going to be at negative 5 comma 0 and at 5 comma 0. Notice how we have two of them, right? We have one subtracting it and then we had one adding it because negative 5 plus 0 is negative 5 and 5 plus 0 is going to be 5. But notice that your vertices are coordinate points. Okay, I'm writing them as coordinate points. Now, let's go and try to find our foci. Here's where it's going to get a little tricky. Okay, foci, if you remember, has a distance. Anybody remember the distance from the center for your foci? Anybody? Anybody? Is that a picture I have? 
Yeah. C. C. C, very good. So the distance from the center to your foci is a distance of C. Now, last class period I gave you guys this formula and we worked on it. Um, I didn't really go through the whole thing, but how do A, B, and C relate to each other? A is the distance from your center to your vertices. C is the distance from your center to your foci. And B, remember, was the distance of your minor axis. Well, what I went through last time was showing you that the relationship between A, B, and C is going to be A squared equals um, B squared plus C squared. What is that? Yeah. that is how we're going to find, I can go and explain, I'm not going to explain that in this video, but I can go and explain again why we, how we got that. But for right now, you guys just need to understand that A, B, and C are related to each other in this equation. All right, and I'll, I'll go and re-explain it again if you need me to. So we need to figure out what C is. Do we know what A is and do we know, do we know what A squared is and we know what B squared is? Yeah, all right. We already figured, we already knew those from right here. So I'm going to say 25 equals 16 plus C squared. Minus 16, 9 equals C squared. Um, square root, square root, C equals plus or minus 3. So to find the foci, Again, notice how the foci is moving along the major axis, right? I want you guys to really understand this. The center, the foci, and the vertices are all on the major axis, right? So is my k of my center ever going to change? The k, the y coordinate? No. Your, your k is never going to change on a horizontal one. When it's vertical, the k value is the only thing that's changing, and your h is not going to change. But that's another point. So now we'll do h plus or minus c comma k. So in this case, I'm just adding plus or minus 3. So I have 3 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0. And that's how you find the center, the vertice, and the foci. I guess we could write the vertices. OK, questions? So what was the whole point in doing the nice, like the whole a squared equals b squared plus c squared if we already do? But well, we don't know what. Never mind. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Right? I know. I thought it was. I thought it was b squared. I'm still 